Okay, so we'll recap some of the important topics of communicable disease. Coming to respiratory infections, smallpox, as you know, causative agent will be the variola major. Last case in India, 1975. Last case in the world, 1977 in Somalia. So it's the only disease eradicated completely throughout the world. Smallpox, variola major. So what was the basis for smallpox eradication? Number one, there was no known animal reservoir. Number two, no long-term carrier state. Infection provides lifelong immunity. See, look at this point number two, no long-term carrier state. Okay, so if there is no carrier state, if there is no carrier state, it will be easier for uh, to eradicate a particular disease. That is why, you know, measles, measles is a target for eradication because in measles also there is no carrier state. They can ask this question, why is measles a target for er eradication? Because measles does not have carrier state. Case detection simple due to characteristic rash and highly effective vaccine available. So this is the difference between the rash of smallpox and chickenpox. Smallpox is a centrifugal rash. Centrifugal means away from the center. Rash of the chickenpox is centripetal towards the center. Okay. If you look at the rash of the smallpox, it's a non-pleomorphic rash. It means it has a specific shape and size. Whereas the rash of the chickenpox has various types of shapes. So it's a pleomorphic rash. In fact, the rash of the chickenpox is known as dew drop on rose petal appearance. One more difference is that the rash of the chickenpox is a superficial rash. Whereas the rash of the smallpox is a deep rash. And because it's a deep rash, it can cause tissue damage. That is why smallpox was more dangerous compared to chickenpox. Deep seated rash. Okay. And it will affect the extensor surface, it will spare the axilla. Whereas in chicken pox, it will affect the axilla, the groin, that is the fold areas, axilla groin, and the flexor surface, not the extensor surface. Okay. The rash of the smallpox, it will affect the palm and sole, whereas in chicken pox, the palm and sole is not affected. So these are the important differences. Okay. And one more difference is that in the case of the rash of the smallpox, you will find a deep seated rash. But there is no inflammation surrounding the rash. Whereas in case of the chicken pox, there will be inflammation surrounding the vesicles. Okay. So centrifugal, centripetal, deep seated, superficial does not affect axilla groin. It will affect extensor surface, affects axilla and groin, affects the flexor surface, affects the palm and sole, spare the palm and sole. No inflammation, inflammation. Done. Measles. What is the cause division? It's an RNA paramyxovirus. What is the incubation period? Very important, 10 to 14 days. What will be the source of infection case? I told you in measles there is no carrier. Okay. So there is no carrier in measles. And because there is no carrier, so obviously it won't show the iceberg phenomena of disease. What will be the mode of transmission? Airborne, air droplets. What is the period of communicability? Very important for measles. It will be 4 days before onset of rash to 5 days after onset of rash. Once again, 4 days before onset of rash to 5 days after the onset of the rash. And secondary attack rate is more than 90%. And that is why it's a rapidly spreading epidemic if it occurs. Clinical features. These are the general features. Fever, coryza, mild diarrhea. What is the diagnostic feature? Coplic spot. Coplic spot. Okay. Coplic spot. It's a bluish spot in the buccal mucosa around the second molar, the lower second molar. Okay. Complications can be otitis media. What can be a cause of death? Cause of death can be secondary infections, superimposed bacterial secondary infections. So late complication will be subacute sclerosal panencephalitis. Measles vaccine. See regarding measles vaccine, we have read that measles vaccine is a live vaccine, live attenuated vaccine. And the strain we use is the Edmonston Zagreb strain given at nine months. It's a lyophilized vaccine means it is in powder form so you have to dilute it and it's given in which root subcutaneous root what is the schedule of administration first dose at nine months along with vitamin a and booster at 16 to 24 months these are the important points you should be knowing live attenuated vaccine edmonston zagreb strain subcutaneous root first dose at nine months second dose at 16 to 24 months diluent will be distilled water and 
measles immunoglobulin this will be an example of passive immunity because you are directly giving antibodies and that is given 0.25 ml per kg body weight who will you give this to a contact a direct contact of a infection mumps mumps the causative agent is also rna paramyxovirus what is the location of infection obviously mumps is infecting the parotid salivary gland incubation period in this case is 2 to 3 weeks in measles it was 10 to 14 days okay mode of transmission is same airborne so what was the period of communicability in case of measles just recap 4 days before onset of rash to 5 days after onset of rash what about mumps mumps is 4 to 6 days before appearance of symptom up to 7 days after onset of symptom if you ask me how to remember all the period of communicability at least measles to remember okay after a case there is a lifelong immunity like in measles in mumps also the secondary attack rate is almost more than 86 percent in measles it was more than 90 percent what is the most common complication in children most common complication in children is aseptic meningitis whereas in adolescents it can lead to orchitis or euphoritis orchitis in the male that is inflammation of the testis euphoritis inflammation of the ovary in the female but remember that even if orchitis occur this usually does not lead to infertility most common age group affected will be 5 to 9 years and vaccine vaccine will be a live vaccine and the strain of mumps is asked the strain of preparation of vaccine that will be the geral lin strain so strain is geral lin strain for measles it was edmonston zagreb strain rubella is german measles but rubella is caused by which virus? It's a Toga virus family. It's an RNA virus of the Toga virus family. And what is the incubation period? Two to three weeks. Source of infection in case. Again, in case of rubella, just like measles, there is no carrier state. So there is no iceberg phenomena. Mode of transmission will be air droplets. It can also see this part is very important regarding rubella. It can transmit vertically from mother to child. And period of communicability will be one week prior to onset of symptoms to one week after rash. Single attack will give lifelong immunity. Rubella vaccine is very important. It's a live vaccine. MMR or MR. Now it is MR. Strain. What is the strain we use? RA 27 by 3. For mumps it was Gerilin. For measles it was Edmonston Zagreb. Rubella. It is also given in the subcutaneous route just like measles. Contraindication will be pregnancy. I told you that rubella virus, the it's a highly toxic virus. Okay, so even if you are giving a live attenuated vaccine, you cannot give it in pregnancy because pregnancy is already an immunosuppressed condition. Now see, look at this question. If the female is vaccinated for rubella, when can she conceive? she can conceive after a gap of minimum one month previously it was said two to three months now it is said after a gap of minimum one month she can conceive what is the first priority group non-pregnant non-lactating reproductive age group females second priority group will be the all children one to 14 years congenital rubella syndrome i told you that rubella virus can transmit vertically from mother to child or even from mother to fetus across the placenta time of vertical transmission the time of vertical transmission will be the first trimester of pregnancy and if the infection occurs after 16 weeks then there is no major abnormalities but the main abnormalities can occur if the infection occurs or the transmission occurs in the first trimester why because rubella virus is considered to be a teratogen what is a teratogen it can cause fetal anatomical abnormalities and what is the triad of this congenital rubella syndrome? The heart will be affected, so there will be congenital heart defects in the fetus. A very common congenital heart defect in the fetus after rubella virus transmission will be patent ductus arteriosus, PDA. Patent ductus arteriosus. Another will be cataract and also deafness. Okay, what category deafness? Not conductive, sensory neural deafness. Okay. 
So the rubella virus can damage those particular nerves in the fetus, those developing nerves, which can carry the sound impulse up to the brain. Okay. So it's sensory neural deafness. So this triad you should be knowing: congenital heart disease, that is patent ductus arteriosus, cataract, and sensory neural deafness. It's a triad of congenital rubella syndrome. And it usually occurs if the rubella virus is transmitting from mother to fetus in first trimester. Because as I said, rubella virus, it is coming in, the, in this torch group, torch. So it's a teratogen, okay. <laughs>